Zettelkasten. Forget it. Second brain. Smart notes. Forget it. Para. PPV, GTD, LYT, ABCD, LMNOP. Just forget it. There are so many different frameworks and systems that you can build around note taking, research, knowledge management, and it just becomes a time sapping exercise. They are still useful to know though. Well, yeah, once you have some notes, you can actually organize, otherwise, you're planning to organize a future that may not even happen. Now, Obsidian can look confusing, scary, and overwhelming depending on your understanding of what Markdown is, and of course, who and how things are being explained to you. Didn't you laugh and hate at the Network Thought apps back in 2020? Yeah, but that was before I'd actually tried out the apps. Now I've actually used Roam, Remnode, Obsidian, Hypernotes, and Obsidian is the one that I fell to because it just worked better for me. And this is where you say you fell in love with the app straight away, insert affiliate link, or buy my template. No. Day one of using Obsidian was an absolute mess. I was using folders, then some folders, and tags, and then no tags, and I was trying to work out what Markdown was, then understand what the graph is, the local graph, the global graph, then the backlinks panel, all the other different panels you can use, the core plugins, do I need them, don't I need them, what settings, community plugins, what am I using, code, I'm so confused. I was trying to learn all the things, and then there's themes. Oh, and you watch your video explanation to help you get through well, it. Well, yes, I do have a long video explaining all that stuff, but at the time, obviously, I hadn't made the video, and all the other videos that were explaining things were actually making me more confused. How? They literally tell you what to do. Well, some were saying to use worded tags, others were saying use emoji tags, and some were saying use folders, others not to use folders. Some use this folder system, others that folder system, and some were saying use code. Mermaid or code block? Whatever. Most of them were talking about their system, their integrated system with sometimes other apps, most of the time their community plugins, and their workflow does A, B, C, D. I'm like, that's great, but that, that's not how I work. So you fell into the procrastinating research again. Yeah, I did watch a lot of hours of YouTube not actually doing anything. This is the part of the video where you tell everyone this is the video for you and then you sell them the course afterwards. No. As I went through the months using Obsidian, my system changed, changed quite drastically. I started off with loads of community plugins and then I got rid of basically all of them. I started off using loads of folders, loads of tags, and trying to manipulate the backlinks, and then I just got rid of, like, all of the tags. All of the folders that I had, I just removed them because I didn't need them, I was never going in them, so now I just have a folder for my journals, a folder for my PDFs and attachments, and a folder for notes. But what you share on Obsidian Publish has more folders than that now. Wait for me to get to that part of the story. Sorry, sorry, carry on. I also started with loads and loads of backlinks because I was like, ah, oh, the graph view, I should use the graph view. Everyone's talking about using the graph view, that looks really cool, let's do it and put loads of backlinks everywhere. Even though you said multiple times before using the app that the graph view is literally just a mess. Yes, and that is still my opinion, but there are some uses, it's just still an absolute mess. But I thought you used the graph view. We're almost there. Okay. So it wasn't until I was actively doing project in my obsidian that I realized what I wanted and what I actually needed from the application. Making videos was the first thing I tried to put into my obsidian which meant I needed a place to write the scripts and write the notes and write the ideas down for the videos. Daily journaling was easy to add into obsidian because I already had daily notes so I could just make the page on the day and then I could go back to whenever it was and just write it there. Weekly notes became something I needed because I was doing a podcast and I was using reflections from the week, the prior week, of all of the notes that I consumed and all the different content that I consumed and bringing it together into something so I needed a way to get to all of those days quickly and then just transfer all of the notes so I had a script for my podcast in one page which is why I made a weekly note. I also realized that I was sourcing my notes so I had these capture notes, these source notes that I was using but I was actually using them in multiple places so I needed a processing note, some other note of all of these points elsewhere which is where my folder system sort of came out, captures, processing, and working. This is where you start selling something. No, I, I, I have a folder system for capture notes which are basically just source notes because I need to put them somewhere, then the reason I have my processing and working folders is so that I have a place for the notes, the processing notes, of just, here's loads of points, think about that stuff. And then I have the working folder because some of those notes with all of the points in don't have any to-dos, so they go into working. Some of them do have to-dos, so they're in processing. 
What I then realised is all of those notes suddenly had loads of backlinks in them because they were referencing loads of source notes, so the backlinks panel was getting quite large and I needed a way to filter through those backlinks. See, you should have stuck with Notion. You can do that with the database filters and sorts. But then I would have a linked database in every page. I'd need to sort out the filters for each page to be specific or they'd need to be self-referencing filters and sorts and I'd have to actively make sure that the filter and the sorts were in the right place and make sure the relations are also in the right place and if I'm going to use rollups to bring that information in, I need to think that through as well and if there are more than one database or more than one relation needed I need to sort all that out plus I don't get any of the benefits of using Obsidian like multiple panels, local storage, the speed of search. No. Now I could filter through the backlinks panel just by searching but it would mean that I need to search for the word or I could just search globally anyway. On the other hand I could actually use the local graph to do this for me every time I enter a page just by grouping the view in either folders or tags. Now I don't use tags so I use folders. It works both ways. Okay so the local graph you might have a use but what about the global graph view? So even though I don't go to the global graph view often, because I've grouped all of those notes in the same way, I can go to the global graph view and immediately see, okay, that is a really big processing note. There's obviously loads of stuff in that note, and because it's a certain color for processing, I know I need to work on it. So there are stuff, there's stuff I need to do. Aren't they like maps of content? Kind of, but like I said at the beginning, forget frameworks, forget systems, just build something that works for you and then add your own names to it afterwards. But how do I start if I don't have a framework to build from? Stop watching videos, for one. Ha! <laughs> Funny one! How about you give me some practical advice? I would probably start with the things that almost everyone has, so that's enabling the Daily Notes plugin, the Templates plugin, and the Starred plugin. If all of the attachments, like the images and the PDF files, are all going to go into the same folder, go into the settings and actually change that to a default setting once you've made the folder. Then make a journal folder for all of the daily notes so they're somewhat organized. A template folder for the templates. A notes folder for all of the other notes you can sort out your categorization afterwards. Then you may want to configure some of those core plugins so you can go to the daily notes plugin and make sure that all of the new days go into the journal folder. What about all the other settings? Feel free, push, push them on, push them off, turn them, change them, do whatever you want with them, mess around with your preferences, but to me they're all just added buttons that you don't really need to worry about to start. But what about the other things you mentioned? Almost everything that I use is automatically set up. It's Obsidian's default, but you will need to make some templates just to speed things up if you want to, of course. Are you selling these? No, but if you don't know how to or don't want to make the templates, uh, I have actually got some of my own templates in the link in the description below. How do I make them work, though? Once you've downloaded the files and the files are on your system, making sure it's a .md file and not anything else, you can put them into your Obsidian folder wherever you've stored it, and then they will just appear in your Obsidian Vault because that's how Obsidian works. But is that it? Yep. And then once you've done that, you can add the templates to the template folder and then add the template folder in the template core plugin. So the template plugin knows where to find the templates. Then when you go into your daily note, you can activate that template. How do I do that? Well, you can either add the new daily note by pushing the button on the side of the screen, which is just the daily note core plugin. You could go into the command palette, which is control plus P on Windows, on Mac, I would assume it's command. And then you scroll down, find the template you want and add it in. I personally add hotkeys to everything I do because I like using the keyboard. So I would go to settings, hotkeys, and then type in template and then configure the template. But it's not working. Okay, the template might not work because of the date setting. So I have my date setting set for what I want. I want days, then months and year. I don't want years, months and days. So you'd either need to to go to the template to change the template so that it matches or you'd need to go to the core plugin and then change the core plugin setting so it matches with the template either one or you could just change both to your preference ah <laughs> okay you can also now add a new page literally anywhere and add in any of the templates so if there is a new page you can just add in the template that's going to automatically link to the daily note which is going to be very nice because it appears in the backlinks and then you can just uh, file it off wherever <laughs> Very nice, but what if I want to change it? Well, if you're bringing notes in from elsewhere and you want the date to be wherever the date was when you first captured it, you'd need to manually change the date in each note, which I know is a bit of a pain in the bum, but you can't automatically do that. But if you do bring in all of the notes on the same day, you can just copy and paste the date and then just paste in all of the pages, opening up all the pages at once if you want, or going through them and adding them in. It doesn't take too long, but for me, I would actually just leave the notes where they are when you want to use them, then bring them in. That's my preference. Is there an easier way to do the daily note 
thing. Um, yes, there are different ways of doing it. Easier is obviously subjective. There are lots of different ways to deal with the daily notes. One of the plugins that I actually use is the calendar plugin, very original, it shows you a calendar uh, and sorts through your daily notes. But before you go playing around in community plugins, because you will get lost, we probably want to sort out the core plugins and the panels that you already have. So when you go into your dashboard, you actually see what you want to see. And I would move the start panel somewhere so that you can see it straight away. I personally have it below my file explorer. What's the difference? Let me finish. The file explorer is different because the only way to sort the files in order is by changing the sort. You can't manually like move things up and down, whereas the start notes you can. In addition to that, you can actually star searches. So you can star pages or star searches and then move them up and down. So if you're looking for a search of something or a filter for something, you can save that as a search. Or if you have a, a home page or a page that you consistently go to, you can just star that and move that up and down for priority's sake. Then what? Use it. Literally just use the app, do some projects, do do some journaling, do something in the app when you capture some notes. Maybe you've got some ideas or things that pop up in the shower or when you're walking around, just note it down in the daily note pages or scratch pad, just dump everything there and sort it out later. It's out of mind. I know from my experience, sometimes I'm like, oh, that's a really good idea. I note it down in my obsidian and at the end of the day, I look back and go, that was a really dumb idea. <laughs> and then I get rid of it. Uh, but it's out of my head. It's just on the daily note. Then if there's information from a video, a podcast, a tweet, a blog, a meeting, whatever, I make that into a deliberate note, a capture note for me. And the difference there, there was a source or there was an event that happened. So maybe a link to the calendar event, if it was a meeting or a link to the video or the Twitter blog, t Twitter blog? The tweet, the blog, the podcast, the whatever. But won't that create loads of notes I need to like sort? Yes. Yes, it will. And that's where you need to figure out how you want to process your notes in your way for your system, in your framework, so it works for you because I can't tell you how you work.